Okay, let's try this again. All right. We're back. Sorry, guys. Not sure who we have with me today. I know we're getting to start a little bit late. Appreciate everybody's patience, whoever is here. Um, let's refresh the page as well. There we go. All right. So I don't know if anyone's still in here after my little debacle there. I had some internet issues earlier, um, but I am back in business. Hopefully we still have people here. <laughs> Thanks for everybody's patience. Oh my goodness. The joys of the internet. Um, so uh, let me also do some text, make sure you guys can hear me. If anyone is here, can you hear me? It looks like it's working. Oh, good. Oh, thank God. <laughs> I was fighting with my audio for a while. I don't think you guys could hear me. Uh, my audio stopped working about 20 minutes ago. I couldn't get any anything to load with the internet at all. But we're back in business. Uh, all right, let's do this. Uh, oh, Scott, I did see your message, by the way. Um, and I, I am aware of it. We're just a little bit behind. I uh, was, get, was getting caught up. So, yeah, after... Um, Post Thanksgiving, we have been trying to get caught up. We have quite a bit of stuff backed up, um, but we're almost to the point where we're wrapped up with the grades. Uh, th thank you again for everyone's patience. Hope, hope you all guys, or hope everyone had a good Thanksgiving. Let's do some fun stuff. Uh, so let me show you what's going on here today. Uh, me, sorry, one second, I gotta find my page. There we go. All right. So let's check out what we're doing this week. Um, and I know some of you have already, or most of you have actually probably done 2.1, which is basically uh, kind of similar to the car project, actually, because you're using a lot of presets. You're just putting a texture with some of the materials. Uh, this one's usually not too bad. These two, though, this is what we're going to focus on today. We're going to do some Photoshop stuff. And... Uh, we have it broken up into, into two different activities just because the concepts between these two are a little different. And I think what what I'll do with you guys is I kind of wanted to do actually a little bit of both. And we'll, and as we kind of go through this, if you guys have questions about anything we're doing, definitely let me know. So uh, working in Photoshop is always a fun time. Um, actually, ha it's kind of a little FYI here, um, but how did you guys... For, I guess for for my knowledge, like how did you guys feel like you did with Photoshop in uh, your digital painting class? Do you both feel like pretty comfortable with it? Do all you guys like, did you have like prior Photoshop experience? Um, is still is Photoshop still new to you? Like the only time you've used it was in digital painting. I'm always kind of curious of what people's experiences with that software, because it it seems like a lot of people have used it in high school. But I know when I went through, I didn't use Photoshop uh, at all in high school. Unfortunately, my high school experience was using typing. All sorts of like speed typing classes, which is about as exciting as it sounds. Uh, all right. But um, what we're basically doing in Photoshop is going to be, it's a little different than, than what you guys did in the previous class, right? So it sounds like everyone probably in this group has used it to some extent, but it's probably been fairly minor. Um, still getting used to it. I mean, it's not like it's a difficult software. Uh, it's just, it's new. So uh, what's going to be the main difference here between this type of Photoshop work and what you did with digital painting is in digital painting, it was a lot of like original creation. Like you were trying to figure out brushes, you were painting little, you know, little landscapes. Um, we're focusing more on image manipulation. So what we're trying to do is use Photoshop. We're going to take photos of real textures, real surfaces, and we just want to find a way to manipulate them and turn them into something that we can use inside of Maya. Now, obviously, when you're doing texturing, 
yes, you can hand paint textures. So I'm sure you're all very familiar with like uh, like League of Legends, World of Warcraft, like all those type of style games. And the texturing for those are typically hand painted. It has a very like stylized, toony look where you can actually see like the brush strokes um, right in the texture. That's not what we're doing today. We're trying to get as close as we can to photorealism. So the best way to get photorealism is, I'm sure it's a shock to you, is not by hand painting the photo and trying to get it to look real. It's by using a real photo. So we're going to pull information from a couple sites. We're going to line them up in Photoshop and then show you how this stuff is applied inside of Maya. So uh, the first part for 2.2 .2 is a UV snapshot. I don't know if you guys have actually uh, got this far in this activity yet, but uh, we're going to export some UVs from Maya for one of the or for a couple of the objects. We'll show you how to do that. And then all we're trying to do is find some simple images, uh, kind of like you did in 2.1, but we're going to line it up with the UVs so you understand that, or basically so it gives you the control to put one texture in one part of the object, a different texture in another part of the object. So this UV map will help us out. And that's pretty much all you're doing for 2.2. So honestly, fairly straightforward. Um, 2.3, I'll show you super quick, and then we're just going to jump in here and do this. Uh, 2.3 is a little more complicated, uh, but what we're doing for this one is we're gonna be making tileable textures, which I'll talk to you guys about in just a little bit. And uh, the, probably the hardest part is gonna be this guy right here. We're gonna do a wall texture, but we're gonna get a little more complicated and I wanna go over masking. So this is really gonna be one of the key things I wanna talk about today is just using masking in Photoshop. And once you get used to the concept of masking, like what it is, how it works, you know, what white and black mean. Uh, if you guys, have, if you all have all seen what an alpha looks like before, like an alpha texture, like a black and white map, uh, if you are familiar with that, that's basically what a mask is. So we'll be talking about that a little bit. Uh, but really at the end of the day, even for 2.3, uh, we'll, I don't know if we'll get into this, but this is pretty easy. Uh, we're gonna be turning into more textures, one for the balcony, one for the wall, two different color maps. Uh, and then we're doing a normal texture, which doesn't take very long. Uh, you can check out the video for that. So what I'm going to do is let's set the project. We're going to jump into, oh, uh, let's see, where am I at here? Environment project set, uh, oh boy. I don't remember which one is which now. Let's not use this one, actually. I forgot to have a lot of versions of this project now. What? You know what? Let me just copy this real quick. Okay. We're just going to pull this from the desktop. All right, so we're going to do set project. Go to my desktop. There's my environment project set. Um, I don't have the telescope set up in this one, like with the textures, but we'll pretend like it's there. We'll use our imagination. Let's open this guy. There we go. So this is where you guys started at the beginning of the week. So we have uh, all of our geometry. We have our light set up. Things appear to be working. So uh, looking at the documentation uh, for, whoops. For this one, there we go. What we wanna do is the very first part. We wanna get a UV snapshot out of Maya and save something that looks just like this. So UV snapshots are pretty straightforward. Um, eventually you're gonna be doing UVs. Uh, you're gonna see that in modeling fundamentals uh, to some degree. It's gonna be kind of a fairly simple uh, project in that class. Um, and then uh, later on in the month when you kind of, or later on in the program when you get to some of your more advanced modeling classes, we're gonna start peeling back the layers and you're gonna get into way more complicated UV maps. But let's talk about what UVs are. And do you guys think you actually know what UVs are? So looking at this, like if I, this is the UV editor. It's like a different window that uh, perhaps you guys haven't been in yet. 
but do you think looking at this you understand what this is trying to tell you like you're just looking at this weird little grid right here it's kind of odd looking right well, let me just kind of select a couple of things you can sort of see what this is relating to in 3d like see this that There's... you got it you're totally right scott you're looking at the flattened version of the 3d model and so it's, it's, I know it probably makes sense looking at it and you're thinking, okay, cool. We flatten it down. Why do we do that? So you, what you're actually seeing is this is the bridge between your 3d world and a 2d world. They're completely different. So when you have a 2d texture and you're trying to put that on a 3d surface, there has to be something there to tell Maya how to apply that to it, right? Like, does it wrap around like wrapping paper? And if it does, how does it know where the wrapping paper goes? What direction is it facing? Is the wrapping paper bigger in one section than another section? Where does it have the seams, right? Because when you unfold wrapping paper, it's cut in certain areas. When you kind of wrap it around, there's like tape that's holding it together. There's a seam somewhere. Where is the seam located? I mean, really, that's exactly kind of what this is. So what we want to do is get UVs for both of these objects out. So we have a sort of a guide in Photoshop. So what we're going to do is go to, uh, whoops, I'm going to hold down right mouse button and go back to object mode. And I've talked to you guys about this a little bit before, but you've probably noticed how holding right mouse button brings up this little menu here. We can go from like vertex, edge, face, object. So those are just going between different components. That's going to be kind of important because there's another one in here we're going to use called UV shell, which is specifically for the UVs uh, in the UV editor. But we're going to go make sure we're an object. I'm just going to simply click on what we need. So click, hold shift. I'm just going to click on all this stuff. We're going to come over here, hold shift, click through all these little guys. And if you have the UV editor open, which is right here, it will probably look exactly like this. You're just going to see all these little UVs in what's called zero to one space. So this is coordinate zero, zero right here, zero to one across, zero to one vertically, and that's one, one over there. So we're going to save this thing out. That's all we're trying to do. So you have to have the object selected to do that. The reason I'm mentioning that too, by the way, is you want to be careful because if you find the group for the pedestal, it'll, it'll actually give you an error when you try saving it out. It does need to be the objects, not the group that the objects are in. Uh, for some reason, it just hates the group. So what we're going to do is once we have it selected, things look good. We don't have to do any modifications. We're going to go up here to the top. And we're going to hit the little camera button. It's called the UV snapshot. We're going to click. Window's going to pop up. It says, all right, you want to save this. Where do you want to put it? So I'm going to hit browse. And since I'm kind of working off this project from the desktop, we're going to put it there. Double click. Now we have all these project folders. Where would be a good area to store this stuff? Well, what I think we should do is let's go in the source images folder. And this is probably where you guys have your textures from 2.1, right? Did you guys all put your textures from that project in here? Like the wood, um, the actually two different types of wood for like the telescope. It's probably hanging out in this folder somewhere. We want to keep everything inside of here. Now, since we're going to have multiple materials, I want to keep all of them organized in subfolders. So what I'd recommend we do is in this window, see a little folder button up there? We're going to hit it. It's going to make a new folder in source images. Let's call this pedestal underscore textures. Okay, we're going to go inside of there. And I'm going to come down here and we're going to type in pedestal underscore UV. So I'm just naming the file save. Now it's not saving it yet. This is just determining the directory and the name of the file. Here is where you pick the file format. We're going to make sure it's set to JPEG. It'll default to Maya IFF, which is a Maya uh, image format. You Normally you could do this, but for the sake of the, the lecture and what you're doing in the activity, I want you guys to do JPEG because the JPEG doesn't have transparency and it's a good teaching tool to just see it with black and white instead of adding this extra layer of complexity with using an alpha. So we're going to make sure we use JPEG for this. We want to have it set to a 2048 by 2048. Um, and if you move them together, they will both update. But we're going to stick with 2048 by 2048. Edge color is going to be white. It's perfect. Tile is 1, 1. So you don't really have to change anything else. 
we're going to do apply and close. Okay, and you can see down here it worked. Now, if you had the group selected, it'll throw an error. I don't remember what it's called. It's something like uh, error while parsing arguments or something, but it basically won't even do it if you have a group selected. All right, so let's show you what this looks like. If I go to the desktop, go in the folder, we're going to go down to source images, pedestal textures, and there it is right there. We've done it. We already have part of the turn in. So this is what the UV snapshot looks like. It is just a simple black and white representation of your UVs from the two pedestal pieces. So this is going to be our guide in Photoshop. So what we're going to do is, actually, I don't think I even need Maya at the moment. Um, yeah, I actually think I'm going to close out of this. Uh, we'll come back to this later just for the sake of my poor laptop so it doesn't have a complete belt down in the middle of the video. Okay, so we're out of that. We're going to go into Photoshop. My Photoshop has been a little weird lately. I'm getting some like graphic card issues, so it might look a little strange when you guys see it. I'm still troubleshooting this thing. Uh, but what I'm going to do is just right click on the texture and we're going to do open with Photoshop. You can also use file open over there if you want. So open with Photoshop. Boom. We got it. So inside of Photoshop, we got our map loaded. It's at 66% scale. If you do want to um, zoom in, if you do control plus, uh, that will go to 100%. You can see, see this little weird issue right here where if I hold space and click to move around the canvas, it's like kind of got this weird line alias thing going on. That's something I'm trying to troubleshoot at the moment. So it's something with my graphics card or a driver issue that I'm still working on. Uh, you guys may not see that. I think it's just something that happened with one of my updates recently. So we're looking at it. You can see over here we have one layer it's set to background. What I'm going to do is just double click and we're going to call this uh, UV layer. Hit OK. okay. There's the UV layer. If I turn it on and off, you can see it's just that single layer. There's nothing else here at the moment. Now what we're going to do is hop back here and we want to use these links under the documentation. Uh, to help us figure out what type of textures we're going to use in the UV map. So let's just do, um, I'll use Pexels for right now. Uh, I use Pexels for a lot of stuff. Actually, if you go through Pexels, you're going to see a lot of images I use in my documentation because it's all um, uh, royalty-free, copyright-free. It's, it's just, it, you can, anyone can kind of use it. So let's type in, um, what type of stone do you guys want to do? Everyone likes marble. Oh, I can some some of these I can see I've used previously. This one's pretty good. A couple of people used this last month. I do kind of like that one. I might pull this one and maybe this this one here. Uh, I might use this one actually on the right or the left. Sorry. So let's load this one up. We're gonna click free download. Incredible. That's what we're talking about. No money. So we're gonna go here. Yep original size. That is a massive texture, which is perfect. So a lot of detail. Free download. Say thanks. I'm saying thanks right now to you in the video. Thanks, Scott. We appreciate your donation. All right. And let's use, uh, I might grab the other one with the color right there. We'll try this guy out. We're going to click. It looks beautiful. Cool. Original. This is still big enough. So free download. Boom, we got it. Now, since we've kind of got these already taken care of, and you can download a bunch if you want, there's nothing wrong with you swapping them in and out just to test which one you like better. I'm going to grab these and move them in my source images folder. So let's go to downloads. We're just, I'm not going to rename them. We're just going to copy. Actually, I can probably just drag them in there. That'd be easier. So now they're hanging out in the same pedestal texture folder. Now back here in Photoshop, since we kind of have our UV saved, I got that open, we got the, our textures we think we're going to use are in there, they're hanging out. Really what I want to do is now save the PSD document so I have my project sort of ready to go. So before I do anything, we're going to go to File, Save As, uh, Save on the Computer, 
and we're going to jump into that same folder because I'm trying to keep everything together. Okay, we're just going to call this pedestal or pedestal texture. That's also fine. Okay, PSD, save. There we go. Awesome. So we're all set. Now, from here, I'm going to bring in one of the textures because I want you to see what these look like when you try to layer them together. Uh, let's start with, let's do this, um, let's do the colored one first, actually. So I'm going to take this, and I'm not going to drag it in here. So when you drag it in, it's a little weird because you can see how it's like, it tries to fit it into the size of your document. This is an import, and it's actually losing some of the resolution and detail doing it that way. So I'm going to hit uh, OK or whatever. I just want to delete this. But we're going to do this a different way. We're going to open it separately. So open with Photoshop. I'm going to come over here. Here's the other one. Let's just open this one as well. Open with Photoshop. So I've got these two open, OK? And I want to bring them into this document. The way I do it is with a couple different hotkeys. So in this texture, if I want to move it over, we're going to do Control-A, which is select all. by selecting the whole thing. Control-C. And control D. A C D. So A C D will if you just hold down control and quickly hit those in sequence, you just did everything you need. So it's now copied and deselected. We're gonna go over here and if I do control V to paste it, so your simple basic, you know, copy and paste, you can see it's in here. Now doesn't that look great? We do have that all, all that detail right there, how blurry it is. So What's going on, if I back up, I'm just using control minus uh, to just to zoom back a little bit, is you'll see it's here above the other layer. And I'm going to go to the move tool, which is also V. And I'm just going to move it. And you can see this thing is really big compared to the document. So what we're going to do is try to line this up so it hits these areas right here. So I don't want to keep it this size. I kind of want to get more of the detail in there. So we can use Photoshop's. Um, free transform tool, which is control T. Control T. We're going to center it right there. I'm going to grab a corner. Oh, let me show you a little trick here. Hold. Not, oh, not shift, sorry. Control. Nope, not control. Alt. Where did it go? There we go. Getting all my hotkeys mixed up. Alt. Alt from the corner is a uniform scale to the center. Uh, or you can just grab a corner and scale it and move it. But we're just going to move that down. Let's hold Alt, do it again. I'm just going to shift it right there. So I'm putting it where I think I want it to be roughly. That's probably fine. Love it. I'm going to hit OK. Now I'm going to take this layer and I want to duplicate it. And we're just going to put it somewhere over here. I know it's overlapping into other pieces. We're going to fix that. So I'm going to double click on layer one. Let's call this, uh, I don't even know what this stone is actually. I didn't even figure that out. Uh, concrete. Is this concrete? Oh, interesting. I didn't realize that was concrete. We'll go for it. Concrete one. Now, to make a duplicate of this, we're going to drag it down here to new layer, which makes a copy. We're going to call this concrete two. Hit V. We're going to move it over here. Um, if you want to, you can rotate it, flip it. Um, doesn't really matter. Uh, we're just going to keep it down there in the corner for the moment. OK, so I have these guys hanging out. Now, the first issue we're running into is you can see that they're covering the UV map, and I'm not really using this as much of a guide because it's very sloppy right now. It's overlapping into pieces it shouldn't even be overlapping into. So what we're going to do is let me just take the UV layer. We're going to move it above the others, so the UV is now on the top. So this is covering the textures. Okay, We're going to zoom in just a little bit so you can see this. What I'm going to do is when you're on the UV layer, we're going to make a stencil that automatically removes any texture that's outside of our UV shells. It's going to produce a really clean look and final result. So over here, if you look at your tools, we have this thing called uh, the magic wand tool. I don't know if you guys use this much when you're in digital painting, but um, it's basically like a color selection tool. So if I go to this and click anywhere in the black when you're on the layer, watch what happens. It selects all the information around the UV shells, right? It's selecting all the black color. 
Now, I have a couple gaps here where it's not doing it. I'm not too concerned about that, though, because this is not really going to matter if there's a texture in there. I just really wanted to clean up the outside section. That's really where it's more important. Now, one thing I'm going to do, and I'm going to zoom in so you can kind of see this, is see how when I did the magic wand, that selection is budding up literally to the end of the UV shell? I want to give this a little bit of a gap because eventually this is going to be filled with some color. It could be black, gray, magenta, it doesn't really matter. But whatever this color is out here, when I get this finished, I don't want that bleeding into the UV shell because it means in Maya there's a chance, like if you put a magenta color out here, you may notice in some areas in, in the render that it looks like there's a very weird thin line of magenta that just barely shows up in a few sections. So what we're going to do is go to Select, Modify, Contract. We're going to contract the selection to give it more of a gap. This is all in the video too, by the way. Uh, so we're going to do 5 pixels, gap. So see how we have a little bit of a space? Okay, so it's going to give us a buffer so it's not kind of interacting with the texture too much. All right, let's back up, Control minus. Okay, now I have my selection. We're going to come down here. I'm going to make a new layer. I'm just making an empty layer. I'm only using the UV layer just to get that selection. With the empty layer, we're going to double click. I'm going to call this stencil. You can also call it mask layer, uh, whatever you want. You can call it baby Yoda if you want. Let's actually do that. Baby Yoda. <laughs> it's adorable. Um, so we have our new layer. It's empty. What I'm going to do, though, is with this selection running, we're going to hit the mask button right there. Okay, so watch what happens when I hit the mask while the selection is running. And I'm on the empty layer, by the way. You can see that the selection is now disabled. Look at the mask. You can tell something is going on down here where it looks like it's using some type of black and white texture information based off of my selection. Now, just, I just want to show you the difference here. If I'm on another layer, if I hit mask and I don't have a selection, look what this is doing. See how normally when you make a mask, it's just like a white color? And this is essentially acting like an alpha. So white means everything is visible. So nothing is really changing. But because I'm using a selection, the last time I did the mask, it thinks I'm trying to convert that selection to my alpha. And that's definitely what I want. So let me just drag this other mask I don't need down to the trash can. And we'll just delete it. So if you ever want to see the mask, what you can do is if you hit hold control and click on it, it'll show you visually what the mask looks like. This is the texture we're seeing as a mask connection on the layer. You can also get to it by going to channels and you can view this guy right here, our, our baby Yoda mask. Uh, if I turn on the colors visibility, it does this weird red overlay thing, but you can just turn the mask off again. Go back to color, and you're right back to where you were. Um, so that's just me showing you what it looks like, so you understand, you know, what what it is. Now, even though I have a mask, if I turn the layer on and off, you'll see nothing is happening. Let me turn this mask layer off too, so that's not covering everything, right? Why do we do this? It's because the mask is on an empty layer. But if you click in this part right here, which is your color, we are going to give it a color. Um, I'll probably do, it's going to do something kind of neutral. You can just probably do gray if you want, honestly, but we're going to be rebellious and add a little bit of blue for no reason. Actually, if we're doing Yoda, what are we doing? Clearly we need more of a green color. All right, we're going to do some green and I'm going to go to the paint bucket. Okay. And we're just going to click anywhere in the canvas on this part of the layer. So watch what happens. Look at that. Wow, that is an eyesore. Um, what it's doing is it's putting paint in the layer. And you can see it looks like it's everywhere. But because there's a mask on it, it's cutting out where it's visible. So if you ever want to disable the mask, just because you're kind of curious what this is doing, if you hold Shift and click on it, see how it disables it? This is normally, if you had done a, a paint layer and just clicked a paint bucket, this is what it would do. It just covers the whole canvas. I think you've probably all done it at some point. But because we did that mask on the layer, we now have a stencil. And you can, even though it's not perfect, 
you can already tell like why we're doing this because see how it's cutting out and giving us this really nice clean result sections. So we're going to do this again with uh, masking with groups. So these two go together. I'm going to hit folder or, or group, I guess. We're going to double click and let's call this concrete group. We're going to take both of these, drag them in the group. Um, I don't know if you guys use this very much in digital painting, but they're pretty handy. It's just like an organizational thing. So you have them in the group. I can collapse it. I can hide the group. All the layers go with it. The reason I'm doing this, though, is because we're going to put a mask on the group to make sure that this texture only appears in these two pieces right here. So how do we do that? We're going to go to the rectangular marquee, and I'm just going to simply drag over this okay we're gonna come over here i'm gonna hold shift see i'm gonna hold shift a little plus symbol pops up we're gonna shift drag over this okay i have two selections two rectangular selections there's our group and i'm gonna hit the mask button on the group and boom, see how it sort of created another mask based on this type of selection? And look what happened to the texture. Here's before, and I'm holding shift and clicking on it, after. Before, after. Now, the, the texture is very clean. It lines up in this area. So even though I closed out of Maya, what this means is if I, even at this point, if I saved out this texture file right now, and if I applied it to my material for the pedestal, you would see that this stone only appears in the big cylindrical piece between the top and the bottom. So it's controlling where we see a texture on the model. Let's do this again a little quicker with the other piece. So we're going to go to pavement. I'm going to do the control ACD to copy it and, and deselect it. Control A, control C, control D. We're going to click back here. We're going to minimize the group for just a second. We're going to make a new group. I'm going to call this, uh, apparently this is pavement. I guess we're going to call it pavement for a pedestal. That makes a lot of sense, but we'll call it pavement group. And I'm just going to control V and just paste it. So it's a layer in here. Let me call it pavement one. Okay, this thing covers everything. Uh, this one is actually really big. Let me back up so you can, oh, this is a, Wow, that is a massive texture. Oh my god. Let's hold down Alt and just shrink this in a little bit because I don't need that much variation. Or I need, sorry, I want more variation. I don't want to kind of scale that uh, that big. This one, honestly, I think we could get away with probably just having one texture kind of cover everything because I kind of like that these two pieces are different. So it doesn't look like the the two you know tops and bottom of the pedestal look identical on both of them in the project. So I'm kind of okay with this just being one texture that kind of covers everything. Uh, but we're going to hit enter, hit the checkbox. Now what we're going to do is just make sure that this group only appears in these sections. So we're just repeating this one more time. Rectangular marquee. Thankfully, because the way this is organized, it's really easy to get all these selections. We're going to click, drag over this, hold shift, click, drag over that. There's my group. I'm going to hit the mask and boom. It's now masking these textures in this section. So we just, we've basically created mask -ception. Uh It's a mask in a mask in a mask. So it's, these groups are masks. But there's also a broader mask that's kind of like a, acting like a stencil that goes around everything just for that final touch of cleaning it up. Now, obviously, because this is a pretty crazy color for our, our baby Yoda, um, you, you're more than welcome to go in there and change it. You can do like a gray, black. It doesn't really matter. Um, that is totally up to you. And if you just simply use a paint bucket and click in there and, and fill it with a different color, it'll update and you'll get something a bit more easy on the eyes. Now, at this point right here, uh, we've actually done activity uh, 2.2. That's it. Uh, we're going to save the PSD and save out the, the PNG uh, texture as well. So we're going to go here, do File, Save for the PSD. File.
Woo. Sorry about that. My computer just locked up. Well, I'm back. File, save as. Okay. We do not need to keep showing that. Save on the computer. And pedestal texture is perfect. We're going to come out down here and change it to a PNG format. And I think in the documentation it's called pedestal texture. So we'll call it that pedestal texture. Save, large file size, you betcha. Hit OK. And this is really what it looks like. We've got our reference textures that we can always swap out very easily in here if we want to. I got the PSD document if you ever want to go back and fix it. I've got the final PNG texture that looks beautiful. I really think we've achieved a masterpiece here. And uh, on the right, we've got our UV map. That's our submission. Okay, so that's 2.2. So before I kind of move on to uh, 2.3, how do you guys feel about this part so far? 2.2. You guys have any questions just about like the UVs, like the exporting process? Does it? Do you have like questions on like how UVs work? Anything we did here with the masking? I'm just going to kind of wait just a second just to see if anyone has any uh, questions before we move on to the, the other part. But this used to be the way I, I would texture a lot of things uh, before we started coming out with you know better softwares like Painter, uh, Mari, where it's all like 3D based. So it's kind of good to know like the foundations of everything, like 2D texturing in Photoshop, uh, because you're going to still end up using this quite a bit, because Photoshop is still used at many, many studios. It's just been around forever, the old tried and true. And there's a lot of cool stuff we're going to get from Photoshop as well that eventually you guys will be able to use uh, when some of you transition into another program like Substance Painter. So they all kind of work together. So when you say... Um, what are the other export methods? Uh, what I guess, what are you referring to? Do you mean as far as like exporting the texture out of Photoshop? Or do you mean like, what are other texturing methods in general? I just want to make sure I'm understanding the question uh, before I go off on some wild tangent. Oh, okay. So for UVs, um, so th I'm assuming you mean like, like from Maya, like what are other ways I could export UVs out of Maya? Um, if that's what you're referring to, there's not really many other ways to get the UVs out of Maya. This is kind of it. You just sort of save like your 2D black and white map. Um, it's like a, just sort of this little informational image. And you'd use it really in any texturing software you want. Um, in Maya, there were the, there's other like grids around it. Like we were saving on something called zero to one space, but there there are other there are other grid spaces around it. You could put UVs in other grids around it and save those out as different UV maps. Almost like breaking one object into like multiple grids of different types of textures that are all collaged together. There's something called UDIMs, which is a little more. Um, Oh, it might be, I think what you might be referring to is when I did the export, um, I was talking about not using Maya IFF, which is another image format from the UV snapshot. So IFF, it still works kind of the same way. It's just, instead, imagine this, instead of it being black, it's just transparent. So it's a, it's a file format that has an alpha built into it. It just is a little different when you layer it inside of Photoshop. It's easier to build the stencil if you have black background inside of there. So it's really just the difference between an RGB texture and a, a texture that ha happens to have an alpha channel. So nothing too too crazy with that stuff. But the really the important thing I think would be eventually when you guys get into Painter, imagine instead of you because you know how with this it's a lot of guesswork. Exactly. Yes, you're, you're right, Scott. So you know how, like, this is a lot of, like, it's really you're just guessing and hoping you put the texture in the right spot. But you can imagine how difficult this would be if someone said, all right, I want a crack on the bottom third of the column facing the camera. 
and I want to make sure the crack has, you know, it, they're getting like very specific where there's like a detail in the perfect spot. But isn't that kind of hard to do looking at the UVs? You're like, well, I don't know where the bottom part is. I don't, I'm assuming it's here, but I don't know visually where it's looking at the camera. So when you get into Painter, because Painters, you actually bring in the actual 3D model. Like you would literally export the pedestal out of Maya as a FBX file. You're going to go into Painter, and when you open it up in Painter, you are literally painting on a 3D surface. Instead of you seeing just the, the 2D thing, it's like you're looking at the model, and you can move around it with your camera, and you know exactly where to put your detail. So it's like a much more advanced version of what we're doing here. It kind of combines Maya and Photoshop together. I'm really stoked for you guys to get into Painter. We're going to talk about that actually in week four. I'll probably do a demo with you guys. We're going to create some really fun stuff. Uh, that's I love Painter. I cannot wait for you guys to see that. All right. Let's do the other one here real quick. So I'm going to go to 2.3. Um, and I just want to show you a couple things uh, with masking as well for this painted wall. Because this is really going to be, I think, the most challenging part of the whole week for you guys is getting this figured out because it's masking, but slightly more complex. So the main goal here is we're trying to do the wall for our environment. This takes up a massive part of the scene. It just, it's the main texture visible, really. It's just humongous. So we want to make sure it has a lot of detail, which means when we create this texture, this needs to be a 4096 by 4096. Now for this one, we're not going to save out the UVs because we're going to make this texture tileable. And a tileable texture, um, I don't know if you guys know what tileable textures are, but I'll show you a couple. These are tileable textures. This is a slightly different type of concept. But if you guys have, I mean, obviously we all play games. I mean, that's kind of why we're here in school because we love video games. We want to make this stuff. Um, these are tileable textures. It's a texture that you typically see in game engines where it just kind of repeats over and over again. You see it a lot with like terrain. You know, if you're playing, um, uh, I don't know, like Red Dead Redemption or Skyrim, you know, you look at the ground and you can kind of tell like every so many feet, it kind of looks like it's the same blade of grass. You're like, wait a minute. And you start take a, looking back and you're like, I think this thing's repeating. That's a tileable texture. It's a texture where basically the sides repeat perfectly. So when you line them up next to each other, you would never know that it's just one smaller texture. So it just repeats infinitely over and over again. Kind of like actually like wallpaper. It just goes forever. That's a tileable texture. So that's kind of what we're doing with the wall. Um, so we're not going to worry too much about UVs for this one. So what we're going to do is go to File, New. And I'm going to make a new document from scratch in this case. So we're not starting with the UV snapshot. We're just making a 4096 by 4096. Hit create. This is a this is going to be a beast of a document. We're going to go to 50%. All right. And let's go back to pixels. Um, the first thing I want to do is... The whole goal with this is kind of getting like a base sort of rough wall behind it. And then we're going to try to layer paint and a couple details on top of it to get something much more interesting. So let's just first start off with this part. Can we get the background wall to look good? And we'll make this part tileable. So I would definitely pick something fairly neutral because the paint you put on top is already going to have color. So you really don't want to have like blue paint on top of like a red wall. Um, so I would stick with something like concrete limestone sandstone a very neutral color so let's uh let's do let me just type in sandstone i'm kind of curious oh we're gonna get some crazy stuff with sandstone let's do sandstone texture come on pexels we might not get a whole lot with this one oh <laughs> or we find a photo literally of a wall that looks pretty amazing Perfect. Let me type in concrete in this case. I know I'm going to get there. We go. This is better. I wouldn't be surprised if I actually find the same one I used for mine. Yeah. The only tricky part is finding the right type of texture. This one's not bad. Um, I like that one too, actually. Look at this. 
This one's kind of cool. I want to try using this one. This, it actually has quite a bit of detail. So my only concern with this is it's busy, and I just wouldn't want it to be too visually distracting in the scene. If you imagine seeing this behind the telescope, um, so we might do a little contrast adjustments on it, but this might work. Um, so whether through Pexels or any of the other sites, just find something that you think could work for a nice back background before we do the paint. Um, we'll do original. Oh, that's actually not big enough, but I think we can still get away with making this work. This is a little smaller than uh, my canvas, so it's not quite going to fill everything, but I have a couple tricks we can use to get this to work. So we're going to go in the project. I'm going to back up, and I'm going to make a new folder. We're going to call this uh, Wall Textures, and let's go to my download. That's going to move this over to that folder. And I'm going to just get a couple more here real quick, just in case. I'm going to use a different site because I think I'm running out of options here with Pexels. Let's check these guys out real quick. And you're more than welcome to use Google, by the way, if you're very good with your Google Google foo. Uh, let's try... I'm kind of curious if we have sandstone on this one. Yeah, those are pretty bumpy. I don't know if I want to do that. Let's try concrete again. Concrete seems to be the way to go. I'm getting a lot better results with this. I kind of like this guy. Ooh, that's nice. Yes, free. Perfect. All right, let's go to downloads. We'll grab this one. That should be enough, I think. Um, the only thing, other one I might look for is I'm going to try to find one that has like paint chips. This one's kind of interesting right here. I don't, I kind of like this one too. I'll show you why I might want something like this. Because eventually we're, we're going to layer paint over the wall, and something like this where I can sort of see this texture that kind of looks like it's kind of crackly, like we could use this to help layer the paint. I'm going to kind of keep this in the folder, and we might be able to do some magic with this guy. I haven't tried this one yet, so I'm not sure if it's going to work. So I'm just grabbing a bunch of different things, and we're going to have fun seeing what we can come up with. Okay. So I'm in my document, um, what I'm going to do is just double click in the background, hit enter, just to unlock it. And we're going to go over here to wall textures. Let's bring in our base. I'm actually kind of feeling this one as my base right now over the other one. I'm going to use the other guy, I think, for maybe some extra grunge detail on top. So let's open with Photoshop. This guy is probably pretty big. Yeah, this has a nice really nice resolution. So I'm going to do control A, C, D, just like we were doing in the previous one. Let's go back and let's just paste it in here just to kind of get a feel for what we're working with. Let's just back up. Uh, control T. This is a good size texture. I'm going to like move it down. It doesn't quite fill everything, but we can probably get away with just um, repeating this a little bit. So I'm going to do something where I'm going to bring this down here off the screen a little bit. I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to drag this layer to the new layer button, and we're going to move it just so I can kind of stick the other one above it. And I know this doesn't look pretty. We're just filling it. You see there's a little line there. We're going to clean that up. So let's put a group here. We're going to make a group. I'll call this wall, uh, maybe call it wall base. And we're going to take both these guys and just drag them in there. Probably should name these as well, but we're going to, we're going to be lazy. Uh, now I have my two layers in here. It's looking okay. I want to clean up this line right here. So this is where we get into something uh, with the heel brush. And did you actually get a chance to use the heel brush in digital painting? Or are you familiar with uh, what the heel brush does? Either spot healing or heel. They're both they're both really really handy. It's kind of like a clone stamp. If, if maybe you've used a clone stamp before. Uh, but they all kind of try to do the same thing. Basically, it's like a patching tool that will help you like blend areas together with using textures around it. It's uh, pretty nifty. So I'm going to make a new layer in the group. We're going to call this heel layer. And we're going to go to... Uh, perfect, yes. Yeah, so if you're familiar with it, this is great. It's going to be very familiar to you then. Um, let's do, 
I might just do the heel brush for this one. So I got an empty layer and I'm gonna have it set to all layers or probably current and below. Basically what, what it wants us to do is sample from these two guys. But I, so it's gonna use the two layers below, but I'm painting on an empty layer. So if I just, whoop, oh, sorry, wrong heel brush. Spot heel is what I want. Um, this one I don't have to worry about setting a target. I can literally just draw through it. So I might want to change some of my brush settings real quick. I'm just going to right click, boost this up a little bit, uh, keep the hardness low. Yeah. I'm just going to draw through right here. And wait. Give it a minute. Boop. And presto. Mine is pretty much gone. This thing does a really good job with very little work. We all love the magic. Boom, look at that. So th this actually feels like it's just a natural like line in the stain. It doesn't have that very obvious sharp edge like we had before. And if I, that bothers me right there, I can just sort of do a, a heel over that. It'll try like breaking it up a little bit more. Overall looks pretty good though, right? Now from here, now that we've kind of cleaned those up, this de definitely feels like it's a nice large texture. I'm gonna come down here and we're gonna, um, flatten all these together because I don't think we're going to make any changes and I want to crop around it. Actually, no, let's not even worry about that. Um, let's just kind of jump right into the paint and we're going to say we're good here with the wall. So let's layer some paint on top. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go to a new layer. Let's actually make a folder for this. We're going to drag it to group. I'm going to call this paint group. This is going to be paint color. So this is just me deciding what I want the paint to look like. Like, what color should it be? Uh, so, I, you know what? Not to put any pressure on you, Scott. But what paint would you like to do over the wall? I'm going to let you decide my fate. It's going to be like one of those uh, decide your, your adventure books. <laughs> what color are you kind of feeling? A little bit of a lag on my end, so um, once I see what you type, I'll jump in there and put the paint. Oh boy, we're going purple, going royal. I love it. Purple would be kind of cool too if you have like a lot of gold accents in the project. Um, that could be kind of interesting. So we're going to go over here. Let's just pick a nice purple. I'm not sure exactly what your vision is. But I'm going to go with my instincts here. We're going to do something not too rich, maybe like a like kind of like a deep purple like this. Let's hit OK. And I'm just going to simply do a paint bucket as, on an empty layer above it. And I w the reason I'm doing this is I want you to sort of understand how the blend modes work and how you can make this paint actually feel like it's paint over the surface. Now, right now, this looks ridiculous, right? Where the hell did all our detail go? But there's a couple ways to blend these together. What a lot of people do is they immediately jump into opacity. They're like, okay, let me fade it. And that kind of works. It doesn't really feel like it's very believable, but it, it kind of does its, its thing. Let's pull that up. We also have the blend modes, right? I could, And you can start kind of going through these and testing them out. Like some of these will feel like it's um, a staining effect. Some add contrast and, you know, increase saturations. Uh, these are all brightening effects right here. These kind of will make it look washed out and sun damaged. These are contrasts down here. This one's kind of interesting because it's kind of subtle. Um, I'm going to do, let's see. Oh, these are doing the opposite. So the opposite of purple is green. So we're getting some inverting effects. I'm kind of feeling this actually multiply, which is a stain. And I know it's really intense, but once we get this mask on there, you're going to see this is going to work pretty well. So we're going to do this. It's now staining the wall behind it purple. So multiplication is just a tint. It's a, probably one of the most basic type of blood modes. It's just literally these colors multiplied against the colors below it. Uh, so red times red, green times green, blue times blue. Um, now we get to use the other texture to break it up. This is where the match is, where we see the purple. Now remember how in the last... Um, Earlier, when I was doing that pedestal texture, you know how I was doing a lot of my masking based off like a selection 
like a marquee selection or like the magic wand selection it where it's still it's the same concept but instead of me trying to select or marquee a selection for something we're going to have the mask selection based off of a texture so the texture is literally going to become the mask instead of me selecting something for the mask so when i have something like this open which has some pretty cool detail i'm going to go into channels and we're going to go click between r g B. And I'm just trying to identify which one of these has the best contrast. And I don't know if there's really a right or wrong answer. Red has its little perks. Blue does as well. I, I'm kind of feeling mm, maybe red for this because I kind of like this breakup right here. I'm going to try using red. I like the red channel. So I'm going to click on the red channel and we're going to do the same hotkeys as before. So control A, C, D. But because I'm viewing a channel, I've just copied that black and white red channel. Now I'm going to go back to color, and I want you to see what happens when I paste it. Control V. See how he just basically ripped that red channel out of the texture, and I've just pasted it as its own layer? This black and white information is eventually going to be the mask that we use in the other document. Hopefully you're with me so far. This makes sense. All right. Now we're now going to bring it into the other guy. Now that I know it works, it's still copied. So let's hop back to here. Uh, oh, I need to save this PSD document, by the way. I've not done any of that yet. We're going a little bit over, so hopefully uh, not holding anybody up. We'll call this wall. All right. So what I'm going to do is just paste it, because I kind of want to see what this looks This actually does look pretty good as far as like the size. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, hopefully it's not, uh, not going to be too overwhelming. Um, it's a lot of detail, I know. But the good thing is everything I'm doing here, I'm going to send you guys the recording. And I'm going to be, uh, if you have the regular playlist, you can watch through this again in a different type of setting with the regular video playlist. This is just me doing it again. Um, so you'll be able to absorb it, I think, after you kind of watch through it a couple times. It's all good practice. So we got this in here. Um, I'm going to really quickly, because it's not filling everything, I'm going to kind of do that little trick before where I try to get this to be large enough to fill it. So let's just do this. I'm going to drag this to a new layer. I know it's not in the mask yet. I'm just trying to like patch this together so it's like all nice and seamless. I'm going to click on both of these and do... Um, uh, we're doing merge layers just to make it one layer. New layer. We're going to go to the heel brush. I'm doing the same thing I did earlier. I'm just trying to clean this little thing up so the texture is big enough. We'll just, just draw right through there. Let's do that. That looks a little bit weird. That, should, that might work. This should be good. Cool. Yeah, that looks okay. That's good enough for the example. All right, so I've got this mask. I'm going to merge this to the layer below, which is Control E. I'm just fl I'm basically keep merging them down until I have one single layer that basically fills the whole thing. Um, okay, now we're ready to get this to work. So here's the moment we've all been waiting for. Uh, now for this to work, what I'm going to go do here, I'm going to just hide this for a second. On the purple layer we set up, I'm going to make the mask. Okay, first I'm making it ahead of time. So we're going to come back to this. I'm going to go back to this layer, and I'm going to do Control A, C, D. So I've now selected this whole black and white texture. Let's just hide it for a second. We're going to click on the mask. Now I want to paste the texture into this mask. <laughs> I know it's actually kind of funny you mentioned that because usually one of my number one critiques with that activity is I can tell students just go bananas with that spot heel because it they think like oh I see every crack every bump and bolt and you know little imperfection they start just healing the hell out of that thing you can actually you'll once you get used to it you'll actually kind of get the, the feel for and know um, how much you really have to push it but I totally know what you're talking about it's so easy to go crazy with the spot heel, and especially a clone stamp. That was like my number one um, issue when I first started creating textures like 10, you know, 15 years ago. I was notorious for clone stamping things to death. Uh, 
did. So it just comes with practice. So what I'm going to do, because I've copied that texture, is I want to paste it into here. Now I have it selected. I want you to watch what happens when I try to do Control V with this selected. I'm going to paste it. See how Photoshop didn't paste it in the mask, even though I had it selected? It keeps putting it on a new layer. OK, I'll do it again. Control V. So here's the issue. For, for this to paste in the mask, it's a, you have to do a little bit of trickery. You have to click on it, go on the channels, and you have to make the mask visible. So I made it visible. Now I'm going to turn off color because this is me just looking only at the mask. It's just a solid white color. But when you make the mask visible in the channels, and this is, you can also turn this off so it's easier to see, but when you're on this and it's visible, and then you do Control V, it will actually paste it into the mask. So it's, it's a little weird because you'd think you'd just be able to click on it and paste and it would work, but you have to kind of do this weird work around here to get it in there. Control D, so deselect. Let's go back to color, turn it off, and look what already happened. That actually looks pretty cool. It looks like paint is physically been eroded away as soon as we got that thing in there. It went back to color. All sorts of, like the difference between that and without it is pretty crazy. This is exactly how I built my texture in my example for my wall. It's pretty awesome. Now, there's a lot of things you can do with this once you get to this point. This isn't even really the end. This is your initial first pass. And so this is where you start thinking about, about how, like, do you like how they're blending? So see how, like, I'll show you an example. Um, let's keep this one. I'm just going to drag another one down to the new layer to make a duplicate. I'm going to call this paint color original. I'm just going to hide this so we can always come back to it. Here's my copy. We're going to call this paint color adjusted. So the reason I'm, I'm kind of doing a duplicate is so I don't mess up this one and I can always go back. But, and if I click on the mask, you know how basically everything is based on like the black and white values of this? If What if you wanted to have it so the paint was thicker here so it's more noticeable because it's still kind of faded? And in this section, it's more eroded. So you're almost trying to create more separation between the painted sections and the non-painted sections. So it's not so kind of uh, watercolory looking. So it's all based on the black and white. That means if you click on the mask and if you use levels, which you probably know what levels is, right? Or curves, like those like simple black and white contrast tools. If you do levels and load it up, I'm, I'm going to be color correcting the mask. Watch what this does to the texture. If I make the darks darker, which is this, this is called black point, this is white point, watch what happens to the texture. See how it's eroding away? I'm creating like patches where the paint's gone. Make the whites whiter. Look at that. This is before, after. So now it looks like it's a thicker paint because you're creating contrast in the texture to get a different type of variation. And you can also move gamma around if you want to like play around with the midtones a little bit. You can have it so it's like generally much more non-painted and there's only like pieces of paint. You could also say, I want there to be a lot of paint, but then there's just patches where it's been kind of eroded away in this one section. And that's just me adjusting the midpoints. So but it's all this is there's not really any trick to this. It's literally you just looking at it and playing around the sliders until you kind of like, you know, that looks cool. I like that. So we'll maybe end up with something like this and hit OK. So I have this and I have the original. Um, and uh, that's our painted wall. And you can keep going farther. You could like take any of those other textures we had. Because I had this other guy here I didn't even really use. You could totally throw that in there and just like throw a blend mode on it and just see like Maybe you're going to get lucky and this just adds some really cool like dirt details without doing any work. And I'll, I'll do it real quick before we get out of here. So like if I just copy this and just drop this bad boy over everything. So I have the wall, the paint on top of the wall. This is the dirt on top of everything. And I'm, just, I'm not even going to like worry about making a repeat. I'm going to do something kind of not always the best. I'm just going to scale it up. 
So it fills it and just literally go through the blend modes to see if any of these guys actually kind of create a cool effect. We're doing as little work as possible. Like overlay, maybe overlay, and I'll just like pull back the opacity. So it's just like this other secondary layer that just adds like these weird variations in dirt on top of everything. Right, so I know this probably seems like a lot. You can definitely see why this is the most complicated part of the week. And to be honest with you, I think this is the hardest part of the whole month because we're, we're doing some pretty crazy stuff in Photoshop. And I'm not expecting like a masterpiece. I really just want to see you guys kind of have fun. You're exposed to something very new and foreign using textures and masks. And I'm just curious what everybody comes up with. So it's, but if you kind of keep practicing this, this little concept of how we're layering things and using masks to like control textures and where they blend is going to be such an important technique that you use in multiple softwares, Photoshop, Painter, Designer, Nuke, uh, uh, Mari, all these things use textures and masks. This is just the first time you've seen it. So, and then we'd eventually save this out as a PNG, you know, blah, blah, blah. And in week three, you're finally going to be applying all this stuff inside of Maya. So you don't really know what it's going to look like yet. You're more than welcome to test it on a material just if you want to see it in Maya. This was all with the mouse. Yep. I'm left-handed, so I tend to be, I'm kind of resistant sometimes with the pen just because being a lefty, a lot of my hotkeys are all on the left side. And that's the same side I use my pen. So it's a little frustrating. But yeah, right now I don't even have my my uh, Wickham tablet connected. It's just me being dopey with the mouse. Because we're not really doing a lot of hand, like painting with this, like um, freestyle painting. All we did was like the heel brush, but pretty much everything else is more just like blending and being smart with how we're controlling masks. It's more of like a technical process as opposed to an artistic hand painted uh, way. But you can definitely see there's like a benefit to like both ways hand painting like you did with digital painting versus photo manipulation like we're doing this week. It's very important to understand both styles. And then of course you can blend them together. This is there's a nice um, balance of both worlds. But it's kind of cool to know there's you can kind of pick your and choose your your poison there and what techniques you like the best. Yeah, it's super cool stuff. I'm 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 glad you're you're digging it. So. Um, that's honestly all I got for you guys. I know we went over uh, a little bit. We got started a little bit late too. Uh, so I appreciate everybody kind of being patient with me today. But if you guys uh, have any questions, definitely let me know. Um, we're going to still be playing kind of catch up with some of the grades. Uh, I really hope we're caught up. Um, one thing too is if we are delayed at all where you're not getting feedback as quickly, um, we're going to keep working out extensions through the whole month through the end of the month going into the Christmas break a little bit. Um, I, so you'll definitely have time to make revisions on various things if you kind of get a critique and want to make some adjustments. So, all right. Well, appreciate everyone hanging out. Hope you all enjoy the rest of your week uh, and also have a good weekend. And I will, at the very least, I'm sure, talk to you guys with the week three live session.